Awesome. Welcome to the Bonhoeffer Project podcast. My name is Dan Lights. I am super excited to kind of kick this new season of the Bonhoeffer Project podcast off. Um, obviously, uh, we've been doing this for a while in the sense of the Bonhoeffer Project, uh, but we've kind of got a new format. I am joined today by Pastor Stephen Kimbrell. He is the pastor of Grace City Church in Irvine. Say hello to the folks. Hello, folks. Good to be here. <laughs> Amen. Um, so I wanted to just give you guys kind of an idea of where we're taking the podcast going forward. Um, you know, Bill Hull, uh, it, you know, founded the Bonhoeffer Project, been a part of this for a long time and still uh, a great friend to the project and uh, invests a lot in, in me continually. Um, but we're taking this in a direction. We're going to do some interviews uh, going forward. Uh, we've got a, a great slate of people that we're going to be interviewing on the Bonhoeffer Project podcast. And the goal, obviously, um, what the Bonhoeffer Project exists for is to make disciples and, and make disciple-making leaders. And so we really want to focus, obviously, on that and, and talk to people who are writing books and pastors and leaders and even lay people. I think that's one of the areas that the Bonhoeffer Project does a good job in is not just focusing on leaders. Uh, but focusing in on just all sorts of people from around every context and walk of life and uh, every ministry context. And even and especially one of the things that I am excited about what the Bonhoeffer Project is doing currently is what they're doing overseas. And so having some of those guys from even out of this country's context in a worldly context, and, and, and I, I just can't wait to do that. So Stephen is joining us, and I want to take a, a little bit to allow him to introduce himself um, so that we know who he is, where he comes from, kind of his context. So just give us a little uh, rundown about yourself and the ministry that you've got going. Yeah, I'm uh, excited to be a part of this podcast. Uh, when the invitation was extended to be a, a co-host, I gladly accepted, and I yeah. guess we're kind of hijacking this from yes, Bill, sure. right? Yes. Um, standing on his shoulders, Amen. his tall shoulders that he has. Yeah, he's uh, tall. So very tall. Very tall. Very tall. Um, so yeah, so I'm I'm glad to be a part of this. I've uh, been a part of the Bonhoeffer Project for. Uh, Five years, I got in a cohort myself. Five years ago, I was reading Bill's book, uh, Conversion and Discipleship, and was in the middle of it. I had just moved here to Southern California to plant a church and was like, man, this is the exact type of church that I want to plant is this disciple making church. And so I'm in the middle of reading that book, and then somebody says, hey, I don't know if you've heard of Bill Hull, but he's speaking at my church, and it was in the city I live in, in Irvine. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely, I've heard of him. And so I, I went to hear Bill speak, got connected, got in a cohort, went through the cohort myself that first year, and uh, been connected with the, the Bonhoeffer Project ever since. Um, but in case our listeners can't tell or not, I'm not from California originally. Alaska? Uh, not Alaska. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Close. I thought I had that. Close. Yeah. Where are we at? Alabama. Alabama. Uh, Alabama. Oh, man. So, that was the uh, game for you the other night. Uh, let's, I think we just skip let's over that part. Let's not talk about yeah, that. Yeah, it's right. still let's, kind of a source. We're going to edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I grew up in the South, and so I'm a Southerner here in Southern California. I grew up in the South, uh, spent my life there 18 years in Alabama, went to North Carolina for school, and met my wife, stayed there for 12 years, and then we felt like God was calling us to the West Coast mm -hmm. to, uh, to plant a church in Irvine. And uh, so we moved out, uh, see, six years ago now, 20, the fall of 2015, and moved out with a team to plant a church in Irvine. Uh, Disciple-making church was the goal. And uh, like I mentioned, got connected with Bill and the Bonhoeffer Project, and uh, we've been going strong ever since. So awesome. here we are. Awesome. Love it. And, and just a little bit about myself, too, just for the listeners who maybe knew. Yes, um, tell us about you, Dan. Yeah, you know, it, it's weird because... I, I oversee, I run the Bonhoeffer Project, and I took that. You're, you're the boss. Uh, well, yeah, but it's weird. Like, even the, wor even the word CEO, I, I just don't like that. It sounds too corporate. This is a ministry, right? And it's a ministry where we get to um, train up, raise up, teach, disciple-making leaders. And I, I'm truly humbled. And, and let me just give you guys some context for how this kind of took place. Because, again, ministry-wise, I've been in ministry for... 20 plus years and uh, never thought ministry was a thing. And again, I'm not going to get into my whole testimony, but like I never had a ministry context growing up. I grew up in church, but you know, I grew up in a Lutheran church. So my pastor was wearing a robe and a sash and 
uh, jewelry. And I was like, you know, I just, that was not the gig for me. Uh, there was no. You just pre- offended all of our Lutheran I, listeners. I'm, ver- I'm very sorry about that. I'm just saying, for me, that was just not appealing. That that wasn't my draw. Um, there was never a, a, a priest or a pastor that came to career day at high school and said, hey, you know, what are you thinking? Low pay and um, <laughs> emails all the time where people don't like you. Um, so that was never a thing for me. But when I got saved at, at the age of 19, um, it, it, ministry just kind of happened because I just I wanted to know more and I wanted to know more and I wanted to know more. So the current church that I'm at, Calvary Chapel Oceanside, I've been here now for almost 14 years. Um, pretty much done everything in ministry here at this church with the exception of women's ministry. And I'm still thinking of giving it a shot one of these days. I think you'd be good at it. Uh, you know, I, I, I am married. I do have a <laughs> wife, so I do try my best to minister to her. Uh, but all that, uh, you know, joking aside, uh, I've been here for, for a long time and gotten to try my hand at so many different ministries. Um, it, it was just this really cool experience and opportunity. Like, I don't know many people. Again, I didn't grow up with a, a seminary mindset. I didn't grow up with a... Uh, I can't wait to be in ministry, right? Sometimes, and for maybe even a lot of our listeners, it just happened, right? You're doing your work, you're doing your thing, and God's like, road to Damascus moment, this is what you're doing now. Um, So for me, I didn't really have a a ministry background or mindset, so it just started happening, and I was lucky enough to have a senior pastor previous to me who really let me try my hand at a lot of things. And so I, I got to try my hand at men's ministry and student ministries and and kids and children's ministries and uh, safety and security. It's a bigger church, so making sure the kids are safe. And I mean, just all these things that kind of my heart was like, ooh, what about this and what about that? And that was really cool. So uh, fast forward a few years, I, I've basically now been the senior pastor here at this church for about three years. Um, but my context really started at the beginning of that where I had a, and, and we'll talk about this later, because actually Stephen on our next show, he's going to be my guest, and I'm going to interview him, so look for that one. But for me personally, it was a very interesting moment. And I, I've said it before, and I've said this in, in some of my things that I've done with Bill, but like I had what I like to call a mid-ministry crisis. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if our listeners, I don't know if y'all have ever had this. I just said, y'all, I think you're rubbing off. Yeah. I think so. Y'all came out. Uh, I don't. I don't know if everybody goes through this because I think we see um, ministers and ministries, and and if you grow up watching it, you kind of get a. I know how to do this. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. I can do that. Yeah. I can do that. I can teach. I can, you know, be the boss. I yeah. can say no here, and I think we should go this direction here, and and you kind of get a feel for. I think I could do that. Yeah. But then. It happens, and you're that guy, mm-hmm. and the buck does stop with you. I had a, a situation; it was really funny. One of our maintenance guys, right when I first became the senior pastor, came to me and said, "Pastor Dan, what do you want to do with this?" And I said, "Oh man, I don't know." And he goes, "You need to, you need to know. Like, I need an answer. Yeah. <laughs> and there's no one else higher that I can go to. Like, you have to answer this." And I was like, "Oh, that's weird. Like, there was no one I could default to." Yeah. And I think it was even in that questioning that I just started going, "What am I doing?" Mm-hmm. And and I didn't mean that it like I knew I knew who Jesus was I knew what the church was uh, supposed to do yeah but I found myself in a in a quandary like really searching on a different level than I've ever searched before for what does the church exist to do yeah and obviously going into scripture um, that's the best place for it right if I want to find out what Jesus told the church to do and to be let's go there and. I really fell on the Great Commission and the Great Commandment, right? <laughs> Love people and make disciples. Mm-hmm. And that was really and, and it's and it's weird because like for for those of you who who read scripture all the time, pastors even do this too. As we teach, we'll get to one scripture, and it's something we've heard a thousand times. We've heard it taught hundreds. Yeah. And then in a in a just in a moment, it means something so much more. The depth of it is just the bottom falls out almost. Mm-hmm. And we thought there was a depth limit. And all of a sudden, we're deep diving all over again. And so the Great Commission just, oh my gosh, it plucked my heart to to the nth degree. I, I couldn't explain it. I was like, we're called to make disciples. Yeah. And so I had this, right? And so here I am thinking I found something new. 
And I talked to a buddy of mine and he said, oh man, you got to go to the National Disciple Making Forum. And I'm like, there's such a thing? <laughs> other people have figured this out. Yeah, too. yeah. There's other people who have figured out this amazing thing that I just found out. And I felt behind the times. I really yeah. did. And that's where I ended up meeting Bill. And um, same thing, Bonhoeffer Project, uh, they really got me. The Bonhoeffer Project really has this uh, a phrase that really, if you just think about it, almost dissects your soul. Mm -hmm. And the gospel you preach determines the disciple you make. Right. And because I love the gospel, as ministers of the gospel should, it really caused me to think, well, wait a second. You're saying that there's other gospels. You're saying that you could preach the wrong gospel. You're saying that you could make a disciple of a false gospel. Right. And it was that kind of... Uh, I freaked out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I freaked out a little bit. And that was where I got involved. So I signed up for a cohort. And for those of you that don't know, Stephen was my cohort leader. Yeah. Uh, Co-leader, leader. Bill was there. Stephen was there. Your sensei. Uh, yeah, Basically, you were my sensei. Right. You were my Miyagi. That's I thank right. you so much. I, I make you call me that, right? Yeah, that's right. Every every week. I'm sorry, <laughs> your, your name? Mr. Miyagi, that's right. And um, that was really what, what set it apart for me because... The way I say it, and, I, and I've said this, if it, you know, my teaching, I say there's things that I never knew I always wanted, mm -hmm. and this was that. The yeah. Bonhoeffer Project put words, um, concepts, it really feet to my faith to show me the area that I was missing. Like, we, and and we've both been through this, where we're reading some of Bill's works, going, "This is it." Yeah. We and and it and it feels like you found a secret. But it's right there in yeah. scripture in plain sight. Talk to me a little bit about kind of that experience for you. Like, because you were saying that when you you were already reading some of Bill's work, like what is it about what Bill said and kind of how he said it or how he kind of portrayed discipleship that really kind of yeah. was it for you? Yeah. And I know we'll get into some of this next time. Sure. But I, I think for everybody that's gotten connected with the Bonhoeffer Project or Bill's writings, it's kind of always the same story. It's like, there's this uh, this desire in their soul, or there's this sense that you know something's missing. Like we're we're going through the motions. We know how to do church. We went mm -hmm. to seminary. We learned how to do church. We learned how to you know parse out scripture and and to preach and to teach and, and oversee these organizations and all of these things. But th there's something in us saying, are we doing what we were really called to mm -hmm. do? And, uh, you know, not just run an organization, not just be the, like the CEO of this nonprofit, but most of us, I think, got into ministry, whether we're, you know, a lay minister or we're paid minister, we got into it to make a difference, right? Yeah. We got into it to follow Jesus and to make disciples that make disciples. But somewhere along the way, it's like we kind of got sidetracked mm -hmm. in all all of the structure mm -hmm. and all of the processes. And we thought that the processes were the end in themselves. Right, right. And we're like, hey, look at my nice, shiny structure or mm -hmm. process over here. And and then all of a sudden, we were just left with this emptiness of, man, there's, there's more to yeah. it than this. And so I think that's where most people are when they come across Bill's writings. That's where that's where I was. That's where I was seeing in Scripture. Um, you know, it, it just looked different. Like mm -hmm. Jesus was all about making disciples. It wasn't about making converts. Mm -hmm. It wasn't this thing of hey, raise your hand if you want to receive me, pray this prayer, and all right, everybody go back to your normal lives. Right. It was hey, who wants to deny themselves, <laughs> um, take up their cross. Yeah and follow me. Yeah. It was the worst sales pitch ever. Yeah, absolutely. And yet a few signed up for it, and then a few more, and a few more, and this thing just began to grow and multiply these true and real disciples who carried this mission of Jesus forward and just exploded around the globe. And so that's where I was, like, man, how do I do, yeah. how do I make these disciples? Yeah. And then I read Bill's stuff, and it's like, gas thrown on a fire yeah, absolutely of like wait a second this guy just articulated everything i've ever thought about That's this right. in a much better way that i could yeah, ever articulate. absolutely absolutely <laughs> so, we've all done that like oh man he said that real good <laughs> yeah. exactly absolutely exactly. so that's that was kind of my first interaction with was bill's writings and mm -hmm. then um the bonhoeffer project and the cohorts and everything just really i think amplified that in my mind and help uh put some i think just some practical aspects to it in my life of how do I, how do I flesh this out? How do I live this out 
as a disciple myself, mm -hmm. but then also as a pastor who's trying to implement these things at my church yeah. and make disciples. Yeah, and I think one of the things that I that struck me about Bill specifically in his writings was his his tone, his uh, goal wasn't to make you buy more of his books right. or try to sell you on more Bill. He was always pointing you to Jesus. Yeah. And and I think for for those of us who who have that kind of like passing the 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 muster test, like you're looking for that. You're looking for people who are genuine in the listen, I'm not trying to get you to my conference. I'm not trying to get you to buy another book. I'm not trying to get you in my downline. I simply want to show you what Jesus said. Yeah. And measure us, the the American church or the you know, the global church against what Jesus said. And to assess, are we doing that? Yeah. And that to me was was the biggest thing because you know I think I, I don't want to say I, I I say this to my church all the time. I'm not a cynic. I'm not a pessimist. I'm a realist. And I know that people are people. I know that I'm a person. And I know that I can get caught up. I can get caught up in uh, the, the 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 notoriety, or I can get caught up in the glamour. I can get caught up in the recognition. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see that out of Bill. I saw you know in my in my cohort like. He was my cohort leader. Like, what guy in an organization like this with the recognition, yeah. all the books that he's written, well, he's the guy, boots on the ground, leading the cohort. That already struck yeah. me as like, wait a second. So this guy's not just a, a figurehead, and he's not just the guy that writes things and then has others do his, his work. He's invested. Yeah. That spoke a lot to... Um, really actually almost substantiated his writings even more. I already agreed with them, mm -hmm. but now I saw the heart behind them was, I just want to make more disciples. Like, I want to hear well done. Yeah. And I think for all of us ministers, that's what we want. Mm -hmm. that, that's, the, that's the secret sauce. Yeah. We want to hear well done. I want to hear after I've ministered for however long God wants me to in whatever context he has me in, to the day that I see him face to face, he says, awesome. Yeah. You did a great job with my son. And for me, I think that's the, the biggest thing uh, about the Bonhoeffer Project is it kind of puts um, a structure. Like to, to me, the, the, the Great Commission is the skeleton. Here's what you need to do. Go make disciples. Mm -hmm. But I, I believe the proper question that we all have is, well, how? Mm -hmm. Right? Because I don't think there's one, you know, it's only this way and here's the curriculum. There's many different ways. Um, Stephen, if you would kind of explain in your own words, like how the Bonhoeffer Project gives us that how, like how do we do that? How do we make disciples? Yeah, so I, one of the things I really love about the Bonhoeffer Project, and I know we're giving a, a big plug to Bill sure. and all of his writings here and the Bonhoeffer Project, Amen. but that's who we are, right? That's right. Um, I, I love about the Bonhoeffer Project the fact that it starts in what we call upstream. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what we mean by that is typically when you start thinking about or you start talking about making disciples or discipleship, everybody runs to what we call downstream, which is how do we do that? Mm -hmm. So give me the book, give me the group, give me the program that I can plug and play, put into place in my church. I can put it in this weekend and it's just going to run um, until Jesus comes back and spit out all these disciples. That's right. And I think we know um, naturally that that's not really how it works. And so the Bonhoeffer Project um, goes upstream, and we start with the gospel. And so it goes back to what you were saying earlier. The gospel you preach determines the disciple that you make. And so we believe that everything in your church, in, in, your, in your community, uh, where you're trying to make disciples is dependent upon, first of all, what is the gospel that's being mm -hmm. communicated? Mm -hmm. And I think when that's mentioned to most pastors or ministry leaders, um, it almost feels like an attack. Like, yeah. what do you mean? Mm -hmm. Because I know the gospel. I haven't met a pastor yet who didn't think that they were preaching a good gospel. And I think so many times, uh, we can talk about this more later episodes, but I think so many times it's not just the gospel we believe, but it's the gospel we communicate. Mm. And so the question is, what is the gospel that our people are hearing us say? Mm. And I think the average Christian, kind of the gospel that they naturally believe is just kind of this forgiveness only gospel. Mm -hmm. You know, I heard the pastor say, if I pray this prayer and repeat after him, um, if I say yes to Jesus, then all my sins are forgiven and I can get baptized and, and I'm on my way to heaven. And that's all they hear. Sure. 
And it's like, yeah, and it may not be like you're saying, it may not be what they believe. Absolutely. But not. it's what they hear. Absolutely. And so then we, we start with these disciples, if you call mm -hmm. them that. We start with these disciples that have signed up for a gospel, an experience with Jesus, just that's very, very small and noncommittal. And then we come back in on the background or the backside and say, oh, by the way, <laughs> there's a lot of rules that you need to follow. Yeah. And there's also this Jesus that you're supposed to submit your life to as mm -hmm. your king and as your Lord and follow him wherever he calls you to in life and do whatever he says. And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I didn't, yeah, I didn't sign up for that. I'm good. I heard forgiveness <laughs> in heaven. That's, 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 that's all I wanted. That sounds like an option on the contract. Yeah, for sure. And I'm not up for that contract. Thanks, yeah. but no thanks. I'll stay this type of Christian. Mm -hmm. And so in the Bonhoeffer Project, we take you upstream and say, okay, what's the gospel you're preaching? And then also, how do you communicate that in an effective way where your people are really hearing um, a more robust gospel, or really kind of what is Jesus calling us to do yeah. after we become a follower of him? And then we begin to work our way downstream. What are the ways and means of Jesus and how he went about creating those disciples? And so we work from upstream to downstream. Right. Absolutely. And you know, what you said there, I think is is probably, for those who are listening, listen, if you're listening to us watching this and you are a pastor, you are a communicator of the gospel, don't be offended by that question. What is the gospel you're preaching? Or at least what is the gospel that others hear you preaching? Because I think when it comes to being able to stand before Jesus and hearing well done, one of the great qualities that we need to possess like on a daily basis is, is assessing yeah. and reassessing and looking and examining our own fruit and saying, is what I'm doing fruitful? Is what I'm saying adhering to scripture is the gospel that I'm presenting, the gospel that Jesus presented. Um, am I giving the the full story mm -hmm. or am I just giving the the good parts? Yeah. Right. Who doesn't like if I gave the gospel and said, hey, who wants to be forgiven and who wants to go to heaven? Yeah. Who's not gonna say, that sounds good. Mm -hmm. And all you got to do is just accept that Jesus did that for you. Yeah. I don't know of anybody who wouldn't jump at that opportunity because it's very easy to convince people of their sin. I don't, yeah. There's not many people who are like, no, I'm perfect. So taking it that step further and, and really getting people to understand the follow me portion, mm -hmm. now we're talking community. Now we're talking obedience. Now we're talking dying to yourself. Yeah. And like you were saying, there was, there was a lot of people with Jesus who he would preach the kingdom and people were like, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. And they left. And I remember even Jesus saying, it looked at his disciples, say, you guys want to go too? Yeah, and they're like, well, where would we go? You've got the words of eternal life. Like, so some people get it, and some people say because they they were told up front, here's the contract, right? Here's the covenant that Jesus wants to make with you, but it's you gotta you're gonna have to die for this one, mm -hmm. and it's like die to myself. Well, that's tough. Yeah, but again, I think as as leaders, one of the great tragedies that I've seen in leaders and pastors of this day and age that the moment that you question what is the gospel? Or the moment you say, well, what is the gospel you're preaching? You almost get that like, yeah. well, aren't you a pastor too? You should know. Was <laughs> I, I know, and I'm wanting to know if we're all on the same page here. Yeah. What, what's your experience been with that? I mean, obviously you talk to other pastors and leaders. Yeah. Do you see any pushback, especially because the upstream part that you're talking about sure. makes the Bonhoeffer Project much different than a program? Yeah. It, it, it's really getting into people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. How do you see that fleshing out? Yeah, I think um, you know. I think there's a lot of things that complicate it, or or make pastors in general be a little more defensive of that question of the gospel that they preach. I think there's so much talk today about people deconstructing their faith, mm -hmm. or deconstructing the gospel, and and that that scares a lot of people. And that's sure. not what we're talking about right. in the sense that a lot of people are doing it, right. where they're deconstructing their faith, the gospel, in a way that they're walking. They're away trying to from blow it up. It. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. They're walking away from it or they're trying to say that, you know, the gospel Jesus didn't say really that I'm the only way and those kind of things. Yeah, it's I would say it's less of a deconstruct, more of a dismantle. Right. Yeah, yeah they're exactly. Not, they're just and leaving the parts. And that's and that's not what we're talking right. about. But I do think that some pastors um, are defensive over it because of that. 
And, and that's not what we're talking about. We're really just talking about, okay, let's go back and make sure that we have a firm grasp of the gospel. Because if this is really the most important truth that has ever been preached in all of the world, then let's make sure we're going back to the basics and yeah. we fully understand it. But not only that, but that we're completely, we're communicating that in an effective way to our congregation. Um, and what I've found in my experience is that sometimes um, I have to say something 20 times before people actually start hearing it. Yeah. And it's not because my congregation is ignorant or slow to learn. It's just because it takes some time. Repetition. It takes repetition mm -hmm. for it to get into our minds and get in our hearts and become just natural um, to, to who we are and how we do life. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's really what we're getting at. Um, we're not trying to dismantle no. uh, or deconstruct the gospel at all. Um, we're just trying to say, let's ask some questions here about right. how we're presenting it. Yeah, and I think it's it's really more of a reaffirming of what the gospel is yeah. and um, uh, re not re-educating, but like going back and and reaffirming what God has done, what he has said, making sure that that the words that we communicate line up with scripture absolutely and don't just line up with what the guy said before us yeah or what we've heard yeah but that we have that scriptural backing and we're giving full context for what we do absolutely awesome well wanted to thank you guys for joining us today on the Bonhoeffer project podcast uh, I want you I'm just encouraging you if you want more information on the Bonhoeffer project you can go to the bonhoefferproject.com that is our website that is where you can uh, watch videos, testimonials. You can see what we do. You can check out the writings. You can check out the, the what, the why, and the how of what the Bonhoeffer Project is. And we encourage you, whether you're a lay leader, whether you're a church pastor, uh, whether that's your heart in, in, in looking to do that at some point, the best thing we can do is make disciples, fulfill the great commission that Jesus gave us. And so uh, looking forward to our next podcast where we will actually be joined by Stephen again. Well, you're a co-host, so you're going to be joining us all the time. Yeah, you got to interview me. But I'm going to interview him. We're going to grill him. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. It's going to be smoke and fire. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's going to be a great time. But uh, thank you guys for joining us, and we'll catch you on the next one. God bless you guys, and uh, keep following Jesus.